The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us worship God. Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hello and welcome to this week's Rosendale Team online service. My name is Janet and it is fabulous that you are here with us. Welcome. I'm going to start with some, I think, some pretty exciting news. The Archbishop of York, Stephen Cottrell, is going to be visiting the Diocese of Manchester and he's coming to Rosendale. I mean, of course, why wouldn't he want to? Best place in the north. Come on. He's going to be here on March the 2nd in the evening. We're going to have a, a service of prayer at 7.45 at St Anne's Edgeside. There'll be more details to come in next week's online service, but we are going to try and broadcast this via Zoom. If you'd like the Zoom details, just email me. My details will be below the video today and we'll get those to you. But it's very exciting. We're going to really look forward to welcoming Archbishop of York here to Rosendale. Some other bits of news for you, some Lent news. So next week we start Lent and on Tuesday we're going to mark the start of Lent by joining with Christians from across Rosendale online to worship and to pray for our communities here in Rosendale. It's going to be on Zoom. It's on Tuesday, February 21st, starting at 7 o'clock. If you'd like the Zoom details, please email me. My details are on the screen and I'll put them below the video today as well. There's also the chance to meet with us for our Lent course this year. It's going to be in person and online. Some of us will be looking at the Church of England's Lent material, Dust and Glory. This looks at how do we really live out our faith in Jesus when life gets messy. If you'd like to join us in person, we're meeting at Christchurch Bake Up, 2 o'clock on Tuesday afternoons, or at St Anne's on Monday afternoons at 1.30. We'll also be meeting online, 7 o'clock on Tuesdays, 7.30 on th Thursdays. This is on Zoom and you can see on screen who to contact for the relevant Zoom links. I'll put this on again at the end of the video so you can jot down who to contact. St Nicholas's are also running a Lent course and this will be on Tuesday evenings, 6.30pm each week in Lent. We'd love you to join with us in person or online as we journey together towards the cross and then that magnificent celebration of Easter. So lots of dates for your diary and there'll be lots more, of course, as we head towards Easter. But let's begin our worship today. Let's sing our first hymn. We're going to sing Be Thou My Vision. Thou my best thought by 
Let us pause now and turn back to God to say sorry for the things we know we've got wrong. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Let us say together, God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus who died for us, forgive us all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. May God our Father forgive us our sins and bring us to the eternal joy of his kingdom where dust and ashes have no dominion. Amen. In God's loving mercy, let us share in his peace. God will speak peace to his people, to those who turn to him in their hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We're now going to have today's reading. Today we're looking at the Transfiguration and we're going to read Matthew chapter 17 verses 1 to 9. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My grandma never got jokes straight away. I loved gathering as family and one of my aunties would invariably tell a very bad joke and we wait to see if grandma got it. Nine times out of ten it would take a wee while and then she'd burst into laughter. There were actually occasions when the laughter would come a good 10-15 minutes after the joke was told. And she would also put her foot in it. Never maliciously or meaning harm, but she could at times say just the wrong thing at just the wrong time. Do you know, mentioning the boyfriend we weren't ever to mention again. Or giving completely the wrong end of the stick in a conversation and bulldozing ahead regardless. And then she'd look around with a, what? Oh, look on her face. When I read this passage from Matthew and I read Peter's reaction to the incredible scene he sees before him, I thought of my grandma. Peter just doesn't get it. He gets the wrong end of the stick, so he blurts out what he thinks is needed. We can't really blame him, can we? He sees his friend change to dazzling white. He sees Moses and Elijah. Peter, the man of action, a man always needing to do something, he wants to build shelters. But this was a time for stillness, for reverence, for contemplation, for wonder. Be still and know that I am God, Psalm 46 tells us. And I think having this passage just before Lent starts, maybe can help us focus our minds on just that. Our lives are full of doing, of rushing to take some kind of action. Lent offers us the opportunity amidst our everyday lives to remember there are times when it is good to be still, to contemplate, to be full of wonder about who Jesus truly is. Matthew places the transfiguration shortly after the disciples have acknowledged that they see Jesus as the Messiah. 
In the chapter immediately before today's passage, Jesus says to his disciples, Who do you say I am? And Peter answers, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. So does this mean his disciples fully understand? Chapter 16 goes on to painfully show they don't. When Jesus tells them he must go to Jerusalem and there undergo great suffering and be killed, the disciples are horrified and Peter blurts out, God forbid it, Lord, this thing must never happen to you. But Jesus declares, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. They have declared Jesus Messiah, but they don't fully get it. So Jesus takes three of his closest disciples, Peter, James and John, up to a high mountain. And this wasn't unusual. We see it many times in the Gospels where Jesus takes himself off or he he takes his disciples to a quieter place to pray. They surely, though, cannot be expecting what happens. The event that unfolds resembles another important transfiguration scene from Scripture. God calls Moses up the mountain to receive the tablets of stone containing the law and the commandments. It's a very mysterious scene. There is cloud and fire. And God speaks to Moses for many days. In Exodus 34, we hear how Moses' face shone. The skin of his face was shining after he met with God. In today's Gospel reading, extraordinary things also happen. Jesus changes. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. The disciples see the glory of God within him fully revealed. They see Jesus looking like we all will one day when the glory of God will be fully revealed in us. And Jesus is joined by Moses and Elijah, the great lawgiver and the greatest prophet. And they talk to him. They are recognising him as the fulfilment of all that is embodied in the law and the prophets. And while Peter blurts out his offer to build shelters, a bright cloud envelops them and they hear a voice saying, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Listen to him. All of Israel's history has been pointing this way, pointing to how God would act in the world. Now, here was Moses representing the law, Elijah representing the prophets, coming to point to Jesus. And here is the voice of God confirming it. This is the way. This is what history has been pointing to. And this way is a who. No wonder this was a time for Peter to be still and ponder, not jump straight to doing. This is a lot to take in. This is a new vision of God. It is new, holy ground. The experience would have helped shape what the early church expressed, what it knew of Jesus. Jesus was fully human. Jesus was fully God. Jesus is imminent. He is alongside us, with us, one of us. But he's also transcendent, far beyond us and totally other. This can be a hard idea for us to grasp. And because of that, I think sometimes we can find ourselves siding with Jesus as human or Jesus as divine rather than equally as both. Some of us will be drawn to Jesus who we know walked the earth just as we do. We find his teaching and his actions inspiring. We find the way he lived his life something to model. Others of us will be drawn more to the risen Christ whose body and blood we remember in the bread and wine of communion, who nourishes us in a mystical way, who informs our prayers and spiritual practices. What Peter came to understand was that Jesus was both a human who inspired his daily life and the God whom he worshipped and glorified. The one informed the other. Maybe 
that's something we could be still about this Lent. Something to wonder at this Lent. We are called to follow Jesus, to be Christ-like, to grow into the image of God in whom we are all created. Our understanding, knowledge and experience of Jesus needs to be as wide and as encompassing as possible. Do we find ourselves siding more with human Jesus? Could we this Lent learn from our siblings who value the Eucharist and find out what they understand of his presence in the sacrament? Could we learn different ways to pray or meditate on the word of God? Do we find ourselves siding with divine Jesus? Could we this Lent maybe learn from liberation theology, see how they understand faith and actions to be so closely entwined? Could we volunteer for outreach or mission work? If you'd like to chat about any of this, please just let me know. I started by saying Peter in this passage reminds me of my grandma and I do this with real fondness for my grandma and for Peter. I love how both could sometimes put their foot in it but who both had hearts of compassion and love. They both give me hope. I am I think slowly or maybe not so slowly turning into my grandma. I can be told a joke and it can sometimes take a while. I have also been known on occasion to put my foot in it. And like Peter, I've made some mistakes on my journey with Jesus. Times when I've not accepted what he is truly capable of. When I've not allowed myself to truly recognise who he is. My grandma had a heart of gold. And Peter, he got there in the end, just as Jesus knew he would. My prayer prayer for us this Lent is that we feel comfortable in being still. That we take time to ponder and wonder, to reflect and contemplate. And that just like Peter, James and John, we experience a new way of seeing and experiencing God and recognising just who Jesus truly is. Amen. of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor He is crowned.
We proclaim the Church's faith in Jesus Christ. Let's say together. We believe and declare that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is both divine and human. God, of the being of the Father, the only Son from before time began, human, from the being of his mother, born in the world. Fully God and fully human, human in both mind and body. One, not by turning God into flesh, but by taking humanity into God. Truly one, not by mixing humanity with Godhead, but by being one person. For as mind and body form one human being, so the one Christ is both divine and human. The word became flesh and lived among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. We now come to our time of prayer. We're going to begin with a collect, which is the special prayer for today. And then after our intercessions, we'll share in saying the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray. Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. During today's prayers, when I say help us, would you join with me in saying, help us to hold fast our confidence in your saving glory. We are your house, O Lord, and the people of your promise. Help us. Help us to hold fast our confidence in your saving glory. God of glory, God of this place, as you once revealed yourself to Moses face to face, so you have shown yourself to the world in the glory of your Son. Help us by your Spirit to know him by faith, to love him with all our heart and to serve him with all our being. Help us. Help us to hold fast our confidence in your saving glory. God of glory, God of this place, your disciples once saw Moses and Elijah point to Jesus as the fulfilment of the covenant of Sinai and all the prophet's words. Reveal yourself now to us in your scriptures that we may behold him whose suffering and death gave life to the whole world. Help us. Help us to hold fast our confidence in your saving glory. God of glory, God of this place, you once came to a world lonely and afraid and showed us the face of love and hope. Use us to reflect your glory and grace in our world and so represent you here to those who are alone, those who are troubled by fears and worries, those whose hearts are grieving by the harm of others. Help us. Help us to hold fast our confidence in your saving glory. God of glory, God of this place, your Son came to reveal your kingdom through words and works of mercy. Give to the sick your healing and to the suffering your hope. We pray especially for the people of Turkey and Syria. May they find the support and help they need. May your saving will and the glory of your steadfast love support all who call upon you in the day of trouble. Help us. Help us to hold fast our confidence in your saving glory. God of glory, God of this place, you once spoke through a cloud to your disciples of old that they might see Jesus by faith even when earthly eyes cannot see. Grant to us this bold and courageous faith that we may see Jesus, trust in him for our salvation and be ready to receive him when he comes again in clouds of glory. We are your house, O Lord, and the people of your promise. Help us. Help us to hold fast our confidence in your saving glory. 
Amen. As our Saviour taught, let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us today. Remember, if you want to know anything about the Lent courses, if you want to know more details about the Archbishop's visit, my email is below the video today. Please get in touch. We're going to sing our final song in a moment, In Christ Alone, one of my absolute favourites. And then we're going to share in a blessing as we go into this new week, as we start our Lent journey on Ash Wednesday. My prayer is that we can remember to be still amidst the busyness and reflect and ponder and wonder on who it is that we follow, who it is that we worship and glorify, on who Jesus truly is. So let's sing in Christ alone. In Christ alone
God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, perfecting you the image of his glory and glad in your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>